Hi, Linus. I'd like to challenge your views on game items. Uh, How is it different uh, from a movie? You pay some money to look at something and feel emotions, pride, confidence, joy, etc. And you get to keep it for longer than two hours. How are game items different than a movie? <laughs> Luke, can I just remind you that this is a paying customer you're laughing at right now? I'm sorry. You're being kind of I just, that's just so, oh, uh, man. Oh, gee, I mean, mm, uh, huh, hmm. well, you see, a movie is an entire experience worth of content that you have not seen before, and you're there to experience the, the story and the characters and the cinematics and all this type of stuff. And a skin in a game is a slightly different version of the same gun that you've been using the whole time. They're not the same thing. I'd say that a skin in a game is more comparable to uh, like collecting things. Yeah. But at least if they're physical things, I guess they. I mean, honestly, that's not really one that I particularly get either. Um, like just physically collect. Like I never collected. I think the you last time things? I collected objects was when I was a child. No. Okay, what did I collect? Wrong. You used to collect like uh, you had that. Unobtainium bin. Okay. That's so, still a collection. Is that a collection? Those are mementos. Like that's not that's not just collecting retro games or collecting movie posters. Like I'm I like I could see I don't consider I don't consider the ticket stubs for every, you know, movie you saw together as a couple. I don't consider that a collection. That's mementos. I'm talking like collecting collectibles. Like buying Super Nintendo games that you never played and are probably you never going to play or whatever. just for the sake of having a collection. That's something that I've never really understood. But I could see how something like in-game skins could tickle that same but how does how is that bone how is that the same as a movie well no it's nothing like a movie yeah. i'm not defending that thing. okay <laughs> I'm, okay i'm just saying I, i'm just saying that i can understand how people could be into that um but in a way where i don't understand how people are into that i i understand that people are into collectibles and i think that's fine i think a lot of the ways that games do that type of stuff is very predatory. I think there are also examples where it's completely fine. I have always defended League of Legends version of free to play. The game is free. Yes. You can buy skins. Yes. Cool. They have to support their development somehow. Yes. You can I I, I don't I'm pretty sure you can't unlock skins through regular play. I'm completely fine with that. Yeah, who cares? It's just a visual thing. Then just don't have skins. You can play and buy no skins, and that means you can play for free and you can play ranked and you can do all that type of stuff. It makes sense to me. I don't like games. Uh like let's let, let's think of like some of the worst examples. We have like a subscription model game yeah. that also has a cash shop. Mm -hmm. That includes loot boxes okay. that you have to buy expansions for. It's just like, oh my goodness. So here's the problem. To me, buying a skin is akin to buying, like, like t t for me, an in-game item should be earned. If I didn't earn it, it has no value to me. So it's kind of like buying someone else's bowling trophy. Like, I didn't bowl a perfect 300 game, so why do I have this trophy? Someone and, said, LOL, so World of Warcraft, there's a lot more games than WoW that fit that description. Sorry, keep going. Um, so, so yeah, I guess, like, like I'm just trying to, I'm trying to differentiate. So, I'm not saying nothing digital has any value whatsoever. Oh, for sure. I'm, and and to, to talk about the example that you just gave, uh, the, the, like, skin should show that you, like, accomplished something or whatever. Yeah. I strongly agree with that. I under, I also understand that that doesn't work in models like the League of Legends model. And League of Legends actually has that to a certain degree. If you like, if you win certain events, I don't remember how it works. I haven't sure. played in a long time. But if you win certain events, you can get like a specific skin. Or even for, just for, for like that. hours played. Sure. Or like for for not for not bailing out of a match a hundred times in a row. That'd be cool. Like rewarding non toxic behavior. How about that? There's that's, a, there's an innovative idea for that's you. That's the reason why I don't like it when they when they compound models because that was something that I had a huge problem with with Destiny. Yeah. Is Destiny is a is a game that you buy, and it has expansions. I don't remember if you have to buy the expansions. I don't know. Yeah. That, whatever. And then there's this cash shop, and some of the coolest stuff, some of the coolest skins in the game, which I do care about, but I care about it when I 
accomplish something that gives me that. I don't care about it whatsoever if I buy it from the store. I have zero value in it from there. But there's content that could have been in the game that would have been unlocking these things Yeah, that you know is now not in the game. And there's constantly developer testimonials of like, yeah, we developed this thing that looks really cool and it was for this new raid tier. And the original idea was like, if you beat it in like under this amount of time or you like take this low amount of damage or you whatever, 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 Achievements. you get this thing. And then the business team was like, cash shop. And we had to take out these challenges, which is content. Yes. And like, I, I personally really, really like kind of almost odd, uh, unintentionally challenging ways of playing games. Like something I used to love to do is like, oh, it's a shooter game, but it has like a crossbow. I'll restrict myself to only using the crossbow for fun. Or I'll try to play a game like non-lethal or whatever. And then there's weird like achievements or, or whatever you can get for doing those types of things. And I always thought that was really cool. And games have less of that stuff now because they're trying to sell the same stuff that you would have got if you just did those things. Sucks. Walker of Sky. Oh, I get it. It says, I bet Linus's take is something along the lines of if you get a physical item, you get to keep. Um, oh, I don't know what you're replying to. So maybe this is not relevant. But I also think one difference with the movie is that you are theoretically assuming that you buy it on a platform where it can't be taken from you, like a blue, like a physical disc. You have it forever. When that game inevitably shuts down and the developer's like, yeah, forget it. Uh, or just allows it to go to seed like Valve has done with Team Fortress 2 in the current bot situation. You, it loses all of its value and you'll, you'll never get any use out of it again. You can't, you can't like hand it down to anyone, assuming that they even wanted it. Like To be clear, I also don't want to, I also don't want to promote just like acquiring stuff for the sake of having stuff. I'm not saying that because it's physical stuff, it's better. No. That's, that's not necessarily true at all. If no. anything, I'm trying to encourage my family to do far more reading on the Kindle and uh, you know on a tablet or a phone and far less acquisition of physical books. Not that I don't personally appreciate the sound of the paper and the smell of a real book. I really do. But it, boy, do they ever take up a lot of space. <laughs> It's literally just packing your house with fire starters at a certain point. So it's like, okay. Um, this is just a really good comment on Twitch chat, which is unusual. So I'm going to read that. Uh, Snow for All says, The problem with end game or late game items in single player games is you barely even use them, then it's over. That is so, that drives me so crazy. Uh, Bravely Default 2, that was one of the things that bothered me so much, is I spent the whole game getting to like this like S tier party. And then I was like, wait, hold on. that was the boss fight? Because, spoiler alert, that particular game like changes you know, the plot twist. The bad guy wasn't the bad guy. I bet you never saw that one coming. Um, so how do <laughs> I know? You subverted your expectations. <laughs> yeah, how do, I, how do I know if they're going to you know, rug pull me again or not? I don't know. <laughs> So I so I fought the boss and I was like, oh, I guess the game's over now. And I like there were literally items I didn't even equip because I was like, oh, I you know might not might get a chance to use these later. I, I somewhat agree with that. I somewhat don't. Some some games do have replayability. Um, some games super don't, and that's fine. I'm not necessarily saying that one is better than the other. There's some games that don't have replayability that I think are fantastic, and there's some games that do. Uh, but for an example, like say Pokemon embraced Nuzlocke. Do you know what a Nuzlocke is? No. So Pokemon games are easy. That's fine. Speak for yourself. I found them extremely difficult <laughs> when I was a child. Well, okay. Um, because the, the whole idea of a Pokemon game is you're learning counters, right? And as you play longer, you learn more counters. Mm -hmm. So they make the game harder, but ultimately you're going to figure out that water beats fire and whatever you're fine and you keep going. Yeah. And that if you choose anything other than Bulbasaur at the start, then you're a moron. Maybe this is why you found the game hard. Chars are, no, Char, or Charmander is just like, it's, it's like, it's such a hack. Why would you even, no, it's just, it's stupid. And Squirtle? <laughs> gross i am deeply offended <laughs> i know but, <laughs> but okay the idea of a nuzlocke and i might screw this up a little bit uh, but the idea of a nuzlocke is you catch the first pokemon that you find in like a region or whatever <laughs> oh my god it's so fun to bother him about stuff like, like you could tell actually upset actually upset yes i was a bulbasaur kid but it also just doesn't matter yeah, that's true um 
but yeah, you you I think you can catch the first Pokemon you encounter in a region, and then you can't catch another one in that region. Oh, really? So it so you really have limits to catch it. And I believe if one of your Pokemon faints, you have to just like get rid of it. I don't remember if that's a thing. Really? Though. But it's like so like hard mode. Yeah, and I could look it up, and maybe I said those things wrong, and I'm sorry. But there's there's more rules to it too, and everything. But it's a way like harder version of playing the game. If Pokemon like just embraced Nuzlocks as like a built-in difficult version of playing the game and then if you beat a nuzlocke you got you got some like form of accolade whether it was like yeah. a visual thing or whatever yeah. like that would be so cool that would be a huge value add but i'm sure games like that to take it away from nintendo and away from pokemon for a second games like that would rather just sell you the cosmetic that they could make for making that type of system which would be a way more interesting way more engaging and better way of being able to play the game if you wanted to play it on that level because not everyone's going to want to like not everyone goes and goes for the hardest difficulty in certain games there's certain game types that i like to play that i don't want to play it at super high difficulty there's other games where i do it it depends right and you shouldn't have to but if you do it it would be cool if you got something for it why mm -hmm. not and i feel like a lot of those types of things are being removed from games it's it's kind of the same thing where like um when us boomer boys were growing up, a lot of games had cheat codes that would make the game more fun. And now it's like, nope, buy the DLC or whatever else. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, come on. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Drop for sponsoring this week's clips. Top-selling Drop.com audiophile and mechanical keyboard products are up to 30% off from now until May 30th. Check out the sale using the link below.